What's going on guys, Brian Nelson here. I'm guessing you're here because you are photographing something shiny or have a project coming up where you you know you're shooting something very, very highly reflective. What is it? I'm curious, what are you photographing that is incredibly reflective? Uh, put that down in the comments, I'm, I'm curious. Let me know, let me know. And let me know if this video helps. I really hope it does. Now shooting shiny, highly reflective objects can be some of the hardest things to photograph in studio just because that surface is picking up everything around it. Maybe you're shooting some glass bottles. Maybe you've got a, a like mirrored coffee pot or like in my case, I have a very round lighting fixture. The shape of reflective objects sometimes determines how difficult this can be. Now this is going to be one of the more difficult ones because it's curved, it's rounded, it's picking up reflections from almost all over my studio. Now when you first set up to photograph something like this, you may think I'm just going to pop up a couple of nice big soft boxes like this and just throw a light on that white background because this is going to be on white. I'm not too concerned about the background because I do go through and pin tool all of these out and drop it on a specific colored background. But you do want to light your background close to what the final product is going to look like. That just helps uh, blend that when you drop that onto a different background. Another tip for studio photography, you want to use a very solid tripod, something like this behemoth right here. Now you don't have to get anything like this specifically. This is a 26 ton Cambo behemoth beast that is kind of a pain to roll around the studio. But you know what? It keeps the camera steady so I'm good with that. So back to the lighting itself here. You're probably going to want to set up a couple of soft boxes to get some nice soft light around these highly reflective objects which can work in certain scenarios. Take for example it works really great for this light but not so much for this light. You know different shape different light different reflections. Now for lights it doesn't matter much if you want to use consistent lights or if you want to use strobe lights. It doesn't really matter which way you want to go with this or which kind of light you want to use. The key here is you want to have indirect light. So looking at this, I'm obviously getting some pretty harsh reflections straight from this softbox. So what I'm thinking here is I'm going to take these softboxes down. I'm going to take some V-flat cards, which are basically four by eight sheets of foam core, white foam core that I've taped one corner and made a little folding V-flat out of. If you've never heard of them, if you've never used them, they're pretty awesome. Uh, they're really, really handy when shooting architectural interior, studio work, anything where you just need a lot of light all around. So I'm gonna hop over here. I'm gonna break down this set and reset, hopefully get some nice indirect light around this light, soften those harsh reflections and hopefully get a better image. So let's do that. Okay, so I've done a few different things here. I've put this light on a longer stand, a longer arm to get that stand as far away from this light as possible to kind of minimize that reflection. I have both of these V cards around to try to like just wrap around this light and give a nice quality of light around it while minimizing reflections. Uh, for the light, I've set that down on the ground and just kind of bounced it back up. That way I'm minimizing the light uh, reflection off the reflective surface here. A lot goes into shooting reflective surfaces and making sure that, that uh, it's like as smooth as possible. So lights on the ground, uh, foam cores around, and then uh, let's take a look at that. So I think we're getting really close here. We just have a big middle section in here that we still need to button up and uh, kind of kill some reflections and just smooth this out a little bit more. So what I think I'm gonna do is see if I can get a piece of foam core on top of these two pieces of foam core to like fully enclose this and provide as little opportunity for reflections as possible on this light. So let's, let's see if I can get that up there without knocking everything down. So far so good. Okay, so now we've got the roof on. Um, it's still looking, it's looking a little dark in the middle. It's just kind of looking side lit right now. So what I want to do is pop a little bit of light off the roof to kind of give this some more fill, make it look a little bit more even. So let's, let's do that. How's that looking? So now we've got the roof on, we've got that light on. This is looking really good. 
but of course it's always, always, always something. There's always something else. So if you notice here, there's this reflection of the handle of the grip arm that's holding this whole thing together. So what we're gonna do about that, pretty simple. Just put a little piece of gaff tape on it. I can never do that. That, that, went, that went horribly. Oh well, I'll just get a knife. So at this point, this is looking really good. There's one last thing that may or may not bother you. It does not bother me. It may bother you or your client is this little chicken strip right in the middle, that little black chicken strip. Personally, I like it. I think it helps give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more dimension. But if you don't like it, there is one simple thing you can do. More white foam core. Imagine that. Just add, add a little big white foam core. Now, since we're not actually getting the camera reflection in this, this makes this a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is button this right up here, right up there. Now, if you had a stand and a couple of clamps, you could clamp that right there. Or if you've got a remote trigger, just trigger the camera and you've got your shot. But that's a good way to do that. Now, if you're seeing above and below the camera, this can leave just a little bit of a square if you cover above and below. And you know, that's something you may have to Photoshop out. That's something you may leave in. And like I said, if you just wanna leave the little chicken strip in the middle, that's another way to do it. I think it does add just a little bit without giving too much distraction in reflections. Um, you know, really at that point, it's just personal preference. So that's not the only way to get that kind of softness on a highly reflective object. There are other ways. That's just the way I prefer to do it. It works with the gear that I have and the setup that I have. Uh, you can also get very large scrims, like six foot by six foot scrims, eight foot by eight foot scrims, if you have larger objects, or if you just happen to have that kind of stuff laying around. I don't, I would like to, but I don't at the moment. Now, if you're trying to do something like this as just a home photographer, uh, one option you can do is kind of, instead of using the V-flat cards, get closer into a corner of your house, go down to your local craft art supply store, Michael's. Uh, sometimes you can even find foam core at Kroger or Fry's or Ralph's or whatever it is near you. King Super, I think King Super is one. Anyway, uh, sometimes they sell smaller pieces of foam core. You can make these little V-flat cards out of any size of foam core. I really do like using the four by eight ones. Just, they're just big and they cover a lot of area and you can really get some nice soft light bouncing off of those big ones. But feel free to use smaller foam cores to make those. You can get like 16 by 20s, tape them together and make little smaller V cards. You can also try one of those little photo booth in a box things. I've never seen really great results with them. They're very limiting trying to do product photography in there because it just it, it's in a box and that's about all you can do. You don't really have much control over lighting or reflections or anything like that. But it is an option. Not a wonderful option, but an option. And one final option you have is just hire a professional photographer, like myself. We always appreciate the gigs. We always appreciate the work. And you know, if you ever need to come back and redo some product photography, you add new product, uh, the professional photographer is gonna know how to recreate that set, recreate that lighting, and make sure that your new images match your old images. It's just, um, you know, consistency is kind of key here with product photography, especially say if you're adding to a website, which you already have product on, you want it all to look consistent, be the same, you know, just have that flow throughout your website. Anyway, let me know what you guys are photographing. Really curious, put that down in the comments. If you like this video, found it useful, informative, helpful, anything like that, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button down there. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button to see more of this, more of this, this, all right looking face. I guess it's all right looking. My wife says it's all right. Anyway, hit that subscribe button while you're down there and I will see you guys next time.